light and dark. You have negative and positive. I'm not going to say wrong or right because it's not wrong or right. We can make mistakes. That's fine. But we're learning through our mistakes anyways. And they're not mistakes because if you're taking a certain path that you think is best for you, you've never done that path. So at that time, it's not a mistake. It's a learning curve. It, that's all it is. So we shouldn't call any of our mistakes mistakes because by going through certain paths and dealing with certain types of people, that's how you learn. So Abraham Hicks has said many times that how do you build in your vortex? How do you know what to put in your dreams or in your goals? And then knowing that those are going to make you happy. So how do you learn who you are? It's by learning who you're not. Hello, my name is Sarah and welcome to my channel. This is my very first video and I hope you like it. It's the introduction video. It's going to be what I'm going to talk about in these upcoming videos, which is really important because you do need an introduction for this. So I've been on my spiritual journey for approximately 15 years. Once I moved to Los Angeles, I decided to live a different life and reinvent myself. All of us can do this. We all might might have some dark shadows, some dark uh, childhoods. We've done things that we're not proud of, that we're ashamed of. But the good thing is you can always, always reinvent yourself. So I decided to become a life coach a few years back. I was working for SpaceX. decided to leave uh, the corporate world so that I can be of help to individuals. When the pandemic happened, I was at the prime of my career. I was helping four VPs, propulsion, avionics, flight software, and application software. As you can see, these are a lot of uh, departments, but I was fully qualified to handle them all. I was really good at what I did. However, after about 20 years in the corporate scene, I decided to work for myself. I'm a coach now. My life experience has brought me to become a coach. Now I call myself a life coach because that's what the certification and what the, the environment refers to us as life coaches. But I just like to be called a coach. I coach you through difficult times. I can coach you through your diet. I can coach you through your exercise. I can coach you through pretty much any difficulty that you're having in life. So I decided to open a channel so that I can also reach out to more people, not just to be limited in my demographics here, although it's a great demographic to start with. I've been blessed with that. But I do want to reach the entire world and bring my services to everybody. So you'll have my information in the description box. And I understand this is the first video, so you know, you're know you not too sure about what I can bring to the table, but with time you'll see. So the first video I'm going to do after this introduction video is about my favorite, favorite book right now. This is the book that we need in order to go through what we're going through in our history. Since the pandemic, I noticed a lot of people were spiraling down and it is perfectly normal. The last time uh, planet Earth had seen something like this was the Spanish flu. So now in 2023, people are being you know, severely affected by the consequences of what's happening. And I don't want everybody to spiral down. I Some of us are spiraling upwards and, and people are telling me, oh, how could you be so happy in times like this? And basically it's through the darkness that we see the light. It's through the difficulties that we learn. It's through the challenges of life that we become stronger and we evolve. So hypothetically, if you go to Knott's Berry Farm, or I should say Disney World, and you go on a ride and you're having a great time, the adrenaline's kicking in and you're having a blast, but you're not learning anything. Going up and down doesn't teach you anything. You already knew the laws of physics and how it worked. So it's not the ride that's bringing you that information, unless it's your very first ride in your life. But as experience shows that you can do the same ride 30 times and you'll still get, get the same kick out of it. 
So you don't learn anything when you're having a great time. You can bask in the high vibration, absolutely, and you should, and try to prolong it as much as possible. But again, it wouldn't be life if everything was just constantly joyous. It would probably be the fifth dimension, sixth dimension, but definitely not the third dimension. So in the third dimension, we have the world of duality. We have light and dark. You have negative and positive. I'm not going to say wrong or right because it's not wrong or right. We can make mistakes. That's fine. But we're learning through our mistakes anyways. And they're not mistakes because if you're taking a certain path that you think is best for you, you've never done that path. So at that time, it's not a mistake. It's a learning curve. It, that's all it is. So we shouldn't call any of our mistakes mistakes because by going through certain paths and dealing with certain types of people, that's how you learn. So Abraham Hicks has said many times that how do you build in your vortex? How do you know what to put in your dreams or in your goals? And then knowing that those are going to make you happy, right? So how do you learn who you are? It's by learning who you're not, what you don't like. When you're first born, you have no idea. You learn to walk, you learn to eat, you learn everything. The first seven years, you're just learning. Then you go to school and then they're telling you, well, don't act like this, behave, act like everybody else. And then you go home and mom says, or dad says, listen to your teacher, obey, don't make too much trouble, don't think outside of the box and just fit in like everybody else. Then you do so, so you can have friends. Then you do so that you can keep friends. Then you act a certain way so you can get an interview. You know, how many people have lied in interviews? So we're not being our true self. So we're putting a front, a mask, so that we can fit into this world and be successful. However, once you hit that success level, you know, as Jim Carrey says it, and as everybody else has said it that had has hit that level, if fame is not what brings you happiness, money is not what brings you happiness. By the way, I speak five languages, so you're going to see a very uh, thick accent. Comment below what you think my accent is. This should be very interesting. Um, but yeah, English was the first language that I learned, so it's impossible for me to speak it perfectly without an accent. It's just not going to happen. So I apologize to the English-speaking people where English is their first language and they don't have any accent. So I apologize only to them. Because they're probably only the ones gonna, that, that, that might get uh, a little offended with the wrong words that I might use. But it's all in good uh, faith. I might throw in some French here and there because I went to French school in my life. But I'm going to try not to do that because that's not the point. So coming back to the purpose of my videos. I'm going to eventually talk about the law of attraction and the angel numbers. But people have, you know, it's already saturated in YouTube. So what I want to do is I want to bring information that has that hasn't been brought up yet. Now, the this book was referred by Blue. She is a huge influencer in the spiritual community. I recently came into Instagram. I was not in social media, very active in social media, but I opened my Instagram Instagram page in 2020 when the pandemic happened, and that's where I noticed there's a huge spiritual community and they're on this change, this evolution, and they're right in the front line. Um, this book was recommended. And just like Neville Goddard or Carl Jung, there's people making videos about their material uh, just so that we can bring it to the awareness of the mainstream. So the same thing I would like to do with Richard because um, obviously Richard Rudd is very busy, the founder of this book. He has classes, he has, you know, podcasts, he's, he's all over the place and he's very active spreading his message. I took one of his classes and where he said uh, to please spread the word as much as possible because this information is very crucial for our times. And as many people that can have this information, the better the success of our planet's evolution will be. So 100th month monkey effect, we don't need everyone on the planet to evolve to this level but if enough of us do it everyone else will follow because who doesn't want to follow bliss right and this book starts with everyone's a genius so please don't click off thinking i'm selling armageddon here or you know you know get your money out of the bank or buy some food to store do that if you think you must but i'm not preaching armageddon i'm preaching optimism i'm preaching an incredible time ahead of us and this book will shed light on the darkness that we're going through. So just like a woman having birth, 
It's very painful, it's bloody, it's difficult. Some women die. It's not pleasant at all. However, once the birth comes out, then that new world, that new baby, that new life changes everything. So it's the same thing with us. Uh, it might get dark for a while, but most of us, not most of us, there's a, definitely not most of us, but some of us are prepared for this change and, and a lot of us are looking forward for this change because we lived in a world where we didn't fit in. Like I said, we've been brainwashed since a very young age to act a certain way so that we can get certain things. So this is basically reprogramming your gene keys. There are 64 of them and it's not something that he just invented. This came from also the I Ching. Uh, I Ching is a thousands of years ago book uh, from a Chinese emperor. I'll put his name down. Um, Chinese emperor that had his astrologers, had his secret teachings, and was basing their decisions, their grand decisions, on the book of life, the book of changes, which was the I Ching. We also have in Sanskrit and in, in India, 64-bit matrix as well. And then Richard, uh, through the human design system, he was able to create this incredible 64-bit uh, matrix on the human gene key. So we have 64 gene keys. And if you upgrade and reprogram every single one of your gene key, you will hit your full potential. Now, why does he say that we're all geniuses? Because we are. We're all born geniuses. We just got it kicked out of us. Uh, I myself loved music, but I never did anything in music other than take a bunch of instrument classes and left it to that because, hey, who's going to get a job in music? I, you know, I was told to get something, get a real job, and then that's what I did. Um, and, and it's fine. It's, it is what it is, and, and that's what led me to my spiritual journey. If I had gone to music, maybe I wouldn't have been this spiritual, so who knows, you know? Everything works for uh, for for you. It doesn't work against you. It works for you. I believe that when you're a kid, you think it works against you because you have no control. You can't control where you go. You can't control what school you attend. You can't control which parents you have. You can't control really your friends. So I remember when I was a kid, I just couldn't wait to be an adult so I can start taking control and responsibility for my life. So with that being said, we're all geniuses. And the perfect example for this is snowflake. Snowflakes are all from the same source, water. However, you will never find the same snowflake twice. That's how beautiful this planet is. Nature is incredible. The, the world is perfectly mathematically designed. If you know about the Fibonacci sequence, the fractal universe, you'll know that if you basically, if in the fractal, if you take a part of the universe, you have the whole universe in it. And then the Fibonacci sequence, which is found in all human designs and all planet designs, such as flowers. The world is it's perfectly designed. It, when you're mathematically capable to calculate something to the T, then it's not, it's not an accident. It's designed this way. So the whole point is to learn the laws of the universe and, you know, walk your path towards your enlightenment. Through these laws of the universe, you can finally be happy. You can finally be joyous. So just like how two snowflakes are not the same, Two human beings are not the same. We all have different DNAs. We all have different backgrounds. We all, all have different childhoods, upbringing. We, we all live in different environments. So we're all very, very unique. Although again, we're from the same source. Let's not, you know, um, let's not forget that. So when you're learning about yourself and learning about what you don't like and what you don't want and who your authentic self is, you end up bringing out your genius all of us have a genius level some people paint some people play music some people run corporations it's it's all in us and not two people have the exact same talent because two people can paint but they can paint very differently so the whole point of building up your gene key is that you can hit your maximal potential and once you hit your maximal potential you'll end up doing what you love. Money will be abundant. Just like Dolores Cannon says, if you do what you are born to do, if you live in your authentic self and you are of service by doing what you love, you will never get sick. You will never get sick, ever. 
And I believe that. There were some experimentations when they were giving high cholesterol food to rats. And not all rats got high cholesterol. Only a few of them got high cholesterol. And why? This is the, the finding of the, the experiment, is that the rats that didn't get cholesterol, they were given love. They were given, they were petted, they were being petted, they were being kissed. And then they were, you know, given the poisonous food. Um, but they were being loved before. And that was enough for the cholesterol not to get into their bodies because they were high vibe. They were, you know, ah, I'm being loved. This is awesome and I'm getting food too. This is great. So it's a placebo effect. You know, if you're negative, if you have an aura that's very dim, it's going to be very easy to be sick, to be ill, to be depressed, to, to see just the negatives in life. So it's all about building your aura up and how do you shine? You shine from within. And that's why Jim Carrey and many other others, uh, successful people have said, if you chase money, if you chase fame, you're going to see that that's not the answer. And why do we learn that? It's because we're chasing what society wants us to chase or tells us, you know, this is what is going to make us happy versus you living in your full potential is what's going to make you happy. At the end of the day, we all evolve, all of us, even the ones that aren't doing anything. Even, let's say, the ones that don't want to work and don't want to have kids and they just want to play video games all day. Let's say, you know, nothing wrong with playing video games, but I'm just putting an analogy there. We need all types of people. You know, some people come into this world for a staycation. They just want to chill. We, there's no judgment here. Some people want to work so much that they're going to have a heart attack. And some people want to just not work at all. There's a whole spectrum of different types of people. And it's up to you to see where you want to be. So there's no judgment. We all evolve just at a different pace. Some people evolve faster by making, let's say, more mistakes and, you know, U-turns on their route. And some people just go with the flow and evolve as well. It's just a different type of evolving. I'm very excited. I'm excited to bring this enlightenment to people. And the more people are enlightened, the better this new world is going to be and the easier the transition is going to be so what is being enlightened enlightened means to be high vibe most of the time so even sages even monks at temples will not be enlightened 24 7. the only time you can be enlightened 24 7 is that if the entire world is also enlightened and happy and joyous if you're let's say if you have wonderful things going for yourself and you're really happy well, guess what? As soon as you step out, you might see a homeless, you might see someone in trouble, and then it's going to lower your vibe because you're going to feel bad about it. You're going to feel sad about it. And you're going to be like, why is humanity the way it is? So that moment in time is going to lower your vibration. And then you're going to tell yourself that's okay because I'm doing this to change the world. And then you're going to go back to being high vibe. Even enlightened beings are not always enlightened. So again, it's very important to just live in your full potential and if most of us do this, the rest will follow because we are a society that needs to follow either a president or a superhero or idols or celebrities. We tend to follow people. That's why on Instagram you follow them. You don't add them as friends like you do on Facebook. You follow people. So the best thing is to follow people that have figured it out, to follow people that got these insights that the rest of us don't. When I went to Prague, I saw that astrological clock and it's mind-blowing how it still works to this day. But back in those days, that emperor had secret teachings, knew how to build it, had these engineers that built it. And when I was there, I heard that they blinded the eyes of the engineer so they can never replicate the, the clock, which is a horrible thing to do. But, you know, medieval times. With that being said, why can't we have a clock like that today in, let's say, downtown L.A.? We can't. They had these teachings, these secrets that we ju that are just not mainstream, that not most of us have. So this is what's going to give us the strength and the confidence to know exactly who we are and why we're here and how we're going to rock. So that's my personal introduction. Now I'm going to talk about a little bit of the book just to get you going because if i start at the first gene key you're going to be like what's a what's a gene key right or what's a shadow what's a gift 
So let's start with the fact that we're all geniuses, every single one of us. We have 64 gene keys within us. There is this hollow genetic profile that you can pull from genekeys.com. You put your date of birth, day, month, and year. You put the location of your birth, the time, and you end up with a hollow genetic profile. Now, it's just like an astrological birth chart, but it just goes a step further. You can see exactly your golden path. Now, I'm not going to go into too much of the golden path because I'm going to leave a lot of stuff out. So you have this hollow genetic profile that you can pull up from his website, and that's going to tell you exactly which gene keys apply specifically to you. Once you go through those gene keys and you fix all of them, you evolve into your fullest potential. And once you evolve to your fullest potential, that's where your gift comes out. Now, why do I say you have to work on these gene keys? Why am I saying that the 64 gene keys that we have in us is bad or is not, you know, naturally good? What's happened is the junk DNA that most scientists don't know what they are about is, is not junk DNA. This DNA, this massive part of our DNA comes from our ancestors. That's why we're all constantly living in survival. We constantly think someone's going to backstab us. We constantly think we're going to run out of money. We're living in the scarcity mentality when, you know, the world is abundant. I heard last time, uh, I think last week, we have something like 250,000 different like fruits and vegetables. That's insane. Think about it. How, how are we running out of food? You know, there's so much food out there. It's just a question of, you know, proper farming. But anyways, let's not get into that. My point is that the world is abundant, but we don't see it like that because of our junk DNA. So we got to, we have to work on this survival mode behavior and transcend it to the next level. So that's why these behaviors are the 64 shadows. So you, let's say shadow number one is going to be ingrained in you. We're all going to have that. We all have it. Then you work because it's a spectrum, right? It's not like one day it's a shadow and the next day you hit the gift level. It's not. So you have the shadow, which is, let's say, jealousy or a low vibrational feeling or behavior that's ingrained in, in your DNA. We, we're, we all have it. Let's, sometimes we all, you know, at some point felt jealous, you know, or like felt envious or felt depressed or felt like we don't, we don't have energy. We've all been there. It's just a question of practicing and, and evolving from that state and then knowing that jealousy isn't the good thing. It's, it's, you know, maybe it's motivating us to do better like they are or they have, but it's at the end of the day, you know, you, you can just be happy for them instead of being jealous, you know? So let's say you start there at the shadow then, you know, you work on it, you catch yourself, you, you get triggered and you work on it again, you catch yourself, you get triggered. And then eventually with time that, you know, dissipates, it becomes less and less because you've worked on your shadow. You decided I don't want to be a jealous person. Well, it's not gene key number one, but let's just say I don't want to be a jealous person. I'm going to work on it. And then the gift, you know, will fix the shadow. We'll basically say, well, you've worked so much at this then now you're not jealous anymore. You're actually really happy for people. And then the gift, you can work on that. You can be more and more happy for people and more and more thankful and grateful. And then after the gift level, it's going to be the CD. Now, why is it called the CD? It's because there's no English word for it. Shadow, we all know what it is. Gift, we all know what it is. But CD is Sanskrit for divine gift. When you work your uh, gift long enough, out of the shadow phase into the gift phase and you work your gift long enough, you hit the CD level. And the CD level is an incredible level to be on. And once you have all 64 levels at the CD level, then guess what? You're living in your full, fullest of potential. So that's why the hologenetic profile is important if you want to hit the gene keys that are specific to your golden path. Now, if you don't, which is fine, you can go through the whole 64 gene keys like I did and learn them all so that you can control all of them when they come up. The biology of cells. So your cells are doing two things right now. They're listening and they're responding. Listening, responding. Listening, responding, right? So with this in mind, you can include the epigenetics, which is the study of environments and how environments are affecting you. 
So the study, let's say, of, of your thoughts as well. That would be the, the biology of your thoughts on yourself. So just like Dr. Dispenza says, you change your attitude, you change your mindset, you change your life. Because it all starts with your thoughts, right? Your thought becomes, if you think about something for long enough, it becomes reality. It's, it's, it's how the law of attraction works. So if it's something negative, it's going to be negative. If it's something positive, it's going to be positive long enough. Of course, I'm not just saying think about it and it'll pop up. But if you think about something long enough and you follow, let's say, the, the synchronicities and you work towards it, you're going to eventually get it. It's just how it is. I'm going to take this specifically from the book. It's so beautifully written that there's no way that I can say it better. So I'm just going to take this part from the book. The Gene Keys. If you're having a bad day and find yourself in a negative frame of mind, this attitude will generate a low frequency impulse throughout your body. Your DNA will respond to this by shutting down certain hormonal pathways in your brain and you will feel sad, depressed and frustrated. On the other hand, if you are having a bad day and are able to break out of your negative mindset and laugh at yourself, high frequency electrical signal will reach your DNA and you will feel lighter and more joyful. Your DNA will respond by activating certain hormonal signals that will lead to your day feeling much brighter. So again, you can think of epigenetics. Epigenetics is the study of how you, the environment affects your genes. This exciting new field in biology is far more holistic in nature than the old models we learned in school. So from the book, your higher purpose, you are a living genius. Every human being is born a genius. And he says, I am not saying you have the capacity to be a genius, but that you are one right now. It's just beautiful. It's not that you have the potential. You are a genius. It's, it's, it's part of your DNA. You just have to unravel it. That's all. The purpose in life is to share your genius with the world. This is what will make you truly, truly happy, is to share your genius with the world. And this is why I highly recommend people to get on social media, not like on an everyday binge, but I didn't have one for the longest time because I just wanted to be private. I didn't want everyone knowing my business. I wanted to be private. I, I just didn't, I'm not a selfie kind of girl, you know, so I, I didn't want to really put myself out there. However, I can't share my genius if nobody knows me. If nobody knows who I am, if I get lost in, you know, the many billions of people we are on this planet and I decide to cut off from all social media well I'm going to be limited so in this era it's wonderful that we have internet so we're you know putting your genius out that's the whole purpose so consciousness studies a field avoided by science for generations which is bad because consciousness should be number one but again science cannot explain consciousness and therefore it's not part of science is now becoming one of the hottest new areas of scientific exploration. So I've seen some science scientists come out. I'll put one name here. I know he's from Montreal, so hey, hey, Nassim. Um, but yeah, so the scientists are coming out saying, hey, 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 what we've learned so far is not 100% correct. You know, there's these factors, there's consciousness that we can't explain, you know, just like the double slit experiment when you have two slits and you throw um, atoms at it, some become waves, some becomes particles. What makes one become a wave and one become a particle is the observation. So as soon as somebody observes or there's like a camera or there an eye on the experiment, it becomes particles. You have two slits and then you have two lines on the wall because it's just particles going straight. But if you don't watch it, it, it hits the two slits and spreads over five lines because they're waving out of that slit, right? Now, why is it that once you look at that experiment and you have something watching it, it changes, which is a mind baffling. But I remember looking at this experiment years ago and it was more like, oh, well, we don't know why it's the way it is. But now we know that there's consciousness involved. There's consciousness in everything. And it is very important to be conscious. And this is why people always say, well, meditate. Because we're just go, 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 go so much that sometimes we have to slam on the brakes. We should slam on the brakes every day. But not all of us have that occasion to do so or the discipline to do so. So we're just caught up in our life and we're human beings, but we're human doings. I like that um, expression. 
we're not just being ourselves. We're constantly proving and doing more than we should, trying to impress people and, and you know, be who we're not. So consciousness doesn't need to talk. Consciousness doesn't need to prove anything. Consciousness can just be. And what is consciousness? There's consciousness in flowers. So a flower would just bloom and bloom and bloom and not want anything back from you. A flower doesn't say, hey, you looked at me painting. I'm not free this thing, you know? It's not like that. It doesn't ask for anything in return. And the same thing with us. We should just be consciousness. When a situation comes about and we're not sure what to do, just ask yourself, what would consciousness do? What would be the best outcome for everybody? And that's Marcus Aurelius. So the things that are in your control, definitely work on those. The things that are not in your control, let it be. There's no point. Just let it go. So the things that are in your control, ask yourself, what is the outcome that suits the best for everyone involved? Not for me, not for just one person, not for the situation, but for everyone involved. And always take the highest route out. And if you do that constantly, you're going to see. Life is just going to get easier and easier because you're always taking the higher road up and not the shortcut, you know, the higher road up. Sometimes it's very difficult. Sometimes you got to swallow your pride. Sometimes you have to let go of people. Sometimes, you know, you just have to act differently so that everyone's happy. And then at the end, maybe that day you're not happy, but at the end, that happiness will come back to you tenfold because you've put everyone else's priorities at the same time as yours. So you're not you know, just affecting yourself in this situation, you're affecting everybody else and you want the outcome to be a positive one and not a negative one. So again, on this planet, if we do what's best for everybody and not just for ourselves, but what's best for everybody, we will finally, finally get back into balance with nature. And nature is our world. Nature is consciousness. Nature is our world. We have abused it, we have used it, we have discriminated, we're stepping all over it, we're trashing it, we're spitting on it. It's it's just horrible what we're doing to the planet. So that's why we're doing this to ourselves. That's why we're doing this to other people. It's because we're doing it to our source, to our planet, to our consciousness. So once we treat the planet fairly, beautifully, with great gratitude and, and lovingly, we're going to start treating others like that. And that's what's going to change the world. So again, in this fractal universe, we have to start with ourselves. No one's going to come save us. No one's going to come and throw money at us and get us out of our situation. We're the only ones that can save ourselves. And that's by evolving. Evolution, evolution, evolution. I can't emphasize enough. I'm excited about this new world. I'm excited to spread the message and to show everybody that we're all amazing and we're all geniuses. And whatever you've been told, you know, in your childhood, at school, however you speak to yourself, your self-talk, you're going to see that all of this negativity was just for you to love yourself at the end and respect yourself because it's long overdue. So thank you very much. This was a longer than planned video, but I'm, I'm not really good at scripting everything. I'm, I'm way better at just talking uh, and, and living in the moment and facing what's in front of me. So thank you for listening. Please subscribe, like or comment, and definitely ring the bell so that you see the next video that comes out, which will be the gene key number one. We're going to go through it and let's see how many of us are screwed up in that one <laughs> so you're gonna see you're gonna have the gene key number one you're gonna be like oh that one i'm pretty let's say in the shadow i gotta work on that then we'll go to gene key number two and this is why i love this book because you can actually uh see what level of evolution you're in you know you can see if you're super low in evolution it's like oh buddy you know like you have to get to work here and if we're uh very high in evolution then at least you can be satisfied that your hard work is paying off so again, gene key number two, you can look at it and be like, oh, that one, I've practiced a lot. I don't have that shadow. I'm in the gift level. That's wonderful. I don't need to emphasize this gene key so much. So then we can go to gene key number three, and then you can look where you are in the scale. Are you in the shadow? Are you in the gift or in the, in the city level? If you're in the city level, don't even watch the video. 
go on to the next one because that wouldn't apply to you. But if you see, let's say, gene key number five, six, seven, you're all in the shadow still, then you know this is a great uh, gene to, to work on. So again, I know this is going to be amazing information for everybody because like I said, not everyone has time or a year to read this entire book. And it's not a book, it's more like an encyclopedia of your genetics. So if you believe in science, you're going to love it because it's based out of science. If you love spirituality, you're going to love it because it's based on spirituality. And if you love history, you're going to love it because it basically says, you know, what was done in history is being repeated. And now we have the tools to, to, to evolve and create the planet, the beautiful planet that was meant to be lived in from the first place. So again, thank you. And I'm going to leave it there. See you on the next video. And thanks for watching. And God bless every single one of you. Every single one of you. Ciao. Feel free to click right here in order to watch the double slit experiment referred to in the video.